Hey guys, welcome to another video here at Cloud Colubrids. So my wine cooler just came in the mail. So we're gonna unbox it. I'm gonna go over all the specifications. And you know, that not that many people are making videos on bromating your snakes, or they're not talking about how to achieve those cool temperatures, especially if you live in like a warm climate like I do. So there's gonna be a good video, stay tuned. So on this channel, we're like one big family just enjoying the reptiles, learning a couple of things along the way, and just communicating with each other. So if this is your first time here, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any of these great videos. All right guys, so this is the box. It's actually a lot bigger than I thought it was gonna be, which is actually good, because I need space in the cooler to brumate my snakes, and that might give me a little bit more space to put decent size um, bins in. Even though they don't move around that much, when it's cool so you don't have to put them in a big bin I'm gonna put them in a small bin but this looks pretty good so let's open it up and see what it looks like So if you live in a warm climate or you just don't have the space, this is all you need to brumate your snakes. You can get this size, you can get it bigger, but this is just perfect. Beautiful brumation machine. All right guys, so we got the cooler unboxed. I'm really impressed. Um, I like the color, nice black with the silver. This doesn't feel cheap. It's not like cheap plastic. It's pretty, pretty good quality. And I'm going to give you all the details, the brand, and where I got it. So if you look inside, you got these, these little racks for wine bottles. Obviously, we're not putting wine in here. And these, these are some shelves if you, if you like them. But uh, I'm probably going to take all these shelves out. Definitely going to take this out. And I'm going to stack the bins to maximize my space. Now, if you only have maybe one or two snakes, then yeah. You could put them on the shelves, but I'm trying to put um, eight colubrids in here, so I, I need all the space I can get. So on the outside, this is going to be the temperature. You could control the temperature, make it warmer, make it cooler. And then this is a LED light that will illuminate the inside, which I'm not going to use that. Um, I believe this goes up to 61 degrees Fahrenheit, so I'm trying to hit at about 55 to 58 degrees for my bromation, so this is perfect. Um, most refrigerators, the warmest, the warmest setting is like 42 degrees. So that's one of the beauties of having these wine coolers. Otherwise, you gotta get a refrigerator, hook it up to a thermostat, control the temperature every time it hits your desired temperature, the thermostat shuts the power off on the refrigerator, and that's how that works. But with this, you just set it, and forget it. So the interior is 27 by 16. So that's how the inside looks. I got the LED light on. You can see the size of this. And then there's this right here. I guess this is housing like the motor so you don't get as much space here. But once you stack up to about right there, then you could use all of that space. And it's a nice, it's a really nice size cooler. So now to set this one, you gotta hold down this little light button for three seconds until you hear a beep. You hear the beep. And now we're gonna set it to the max temperature of 56 degrees and then you hold this down for three seconds. So right now it's 77 degrees. I set it for 56. And 
I just turned it on, so that's why it's 77 degrees. So if you guys live in a warm climate, this is the perfect thing. And this one holds 36 wine bottles. That's the way they judge the size. So if you go to a home goods store, check it out. Usually they have them on display. And this one has a little fan that circulates the air, but you still should open the door once a day just to make sure you get new airflow in. So out here in South Florida, my room averages around 78 to 79 degrees in the reptile room. Outside is a little bit cooler than that. So I don't need an incubator for my eggs. I could just put them in the closet, let them be. But for brumation, I don't have that luxury to have a room or an attic or a basement where it's gonna be cold. So using a cooler is great. And you could really control the exact temperature. So that's one of the beauties of having a cooler. Another thing that's really important is the air circulation inside the cooler. So what you wanna do, simple. Just open the cooler for about 20 seconds a day. Just open it, leave it open for about 20 seconds. Let air get in there, close it, that's it. Just once a day and that'll keep air inside the cooler just to make sure that the snakes are getting the proper airflow. So I'm gonna give you some quick tips how to brumate your snakes, how to get them prepared for brumation. The first and most important thing make sure they don't have any feces in their body so what you want to do is simple don't feed them for three to four weeks and watch their, their them go to the bathroom make sure they already went to the bathroom a couple of times and wait at least a week until that's it they're not going to the bathroom anymore and you know that their system is clear because if the food sits in their stomach and you put them in a cool room or a cooler it's just going to rot in their stomach and it could even kill them so another tip what i did with my snakes I pulled the, the heating tape cord so they're not getting heat anymore. I just unplugged it from the thermostat. So if you're providing heat to your snake, take them away from the heat for at least a week or two to acclimate them because you don't want to take them from a bin that has a warm side of over 80 degrees and put them right into a cooler or put them in a cold room that's 45 to 55 degrees because you might shock them. They might be okay, but it's, it's better to just acclimate them. So take them away from the heat for a little while before you put them into the cooler. So it's always good to do a little research. If you have a mountain king snake or a corn snake, they might need slightly different temperatures, but the average 55 degrees for around 60 to 90 days. So I'm gonna do mine for 90 days, which is three months at 55 degrees. So this is my first time breeding, so it's gonna be fun, it's gonna be an experience. And I'm gonna be using a temp gun to check the temperatures after I put the snakes in. About twice a day I'm gonna check in the morning and at night, make sure it's not going too much above 55 or below, that it's right in the sweet spot. And I'm also gonna be making sure, since it's clear, I'm gonna cover it. Because the snakes, you don't want them to be able to see you walking around. You want them to be kind of like in hibernation, just relaxing. And I'm gonna check the water bowl. You can lift it once a day when you open it for the airflow. Just make sure that their water bowls are full. They got water, everything is clean, and that's about it. But just make sure the temperatures are right and there's airflow going in there, which again, open it once a day and you'll be good. So if you guys are interested in this particular wine cooler, I got it on Amazon. It's the Arctic Star. And I'll give you the exact model number. It's right there, but I'm also going to leave descriptions. It's not too heavy. You could fit a decent amount of snakes in there and you can set the temperature up to 56 degrees, which is great. So this particular model was only $299, $300 on Amazon and they have a large selection, all different kinds. It doesn't have to be Amazon. They even have nice ones in Lowe's and Home Depot, but I just couldn't fit it in my car. so. Work, um, it was free shipping, $2.99 free shipping, you can't beat that. So remember, if you guys have any questions, please leave comments below. I love answering the questions. And I'm a little hungry now, I'm going to get a little coffee, a little dinner, um, and I'm going to get you guys some snake videos coming, maybe next day or two. So stay tuned for that, and I just feel really blessed that I could actually do all this with you guys, show you exactly what I'm doing step by step, so you guys can learn from me. In case I make a mistake, just let me know. And with that, be safe, take care, and I'll catch you in the next one. Now, I just thought about it. I can't do a video without showing you at least one or two snakes, so let me show you a couple of snakes real quick. My 
high white 6040 Cali King male. Now, this guy was supposed to breed this season coming up in 2021. That was my plans anyway. Him and the other three, I have two females and two males. But they just didn't get up to size. And you know, I was feeding them every four to five days. They were putting on some weight. They definitely put on size, but I'm not gonna force feed them to get them to breed earlier. That's not the way to do it. So no rush, we're gonna probably do it next year. They'll definitely be up to size by next year. But just a beautiful group of snakes. Now let's check out that's the male. Here's a female right here. She's just relaxing. I'll let her relax. And I have another female right here. I'm not gonna mess with her either. And this is another male that I have, but he's definitely going into shed, so I'm not going to mess with him either. And let me show you another pair that was supposed to breed in 2021, but I'm going to wait till 2022. My pair of T-positive Nelson's Milk Snakes. And that's a pair. Let me show you up close. Beautiful snake. And this right here is the male. He looks like he's hungry. And that's the female. And these are both head splotched. So the babies might get some like this, and you're gonna get some with crazy patterns. And that's the T positive Nelsons. Gonna have all kind of crazy babies from that, that one, but that's gonna be 2022. They didn't make it up to size. So that's my male, Cali King. And this one's Het for Palmer Ghost Light Phase. Definitely gonna be an interesting pairing for 2022. Try and produce some of my first Palmer Ghost. And let me let me show you the female California King. Het Palmer Ghost Light Phase. And there she is. Isn't she pretty? Now, the ones that I put blue tape on, those are the ones that I plan on breeding in the following season, so that's why I put it there. And I feed them every four to five days. My other snakes, I feed them every Sunday, so it's once a week. But for the ones that I'm trying to get up to size, every four to five days, I give them a meal, just to get them a little bit more up to size, but without overfeeding them. All right, so now I feel a little bit better. Showed you some of my snakes. And with that, be safe. I'll catch you in the next one. Wait, wait, you wanna see one more snake? Just, just one more. I'll show, I'll show you one more snake.